we need to evacuate this space, please use the door to your right, my left, and the security personnel will take you to the assigned muster point. Please stand now for the procession of flags. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Antigua and Barbuda. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Barbados. Bermuda. Cayman Islands. The Commonwealth of Dominica. Grenada. The Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Jamaica. Montserrat. Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis.
St. Lucia. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Turks and Caicos Islands. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand at attention for the national anthem of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, played by the 3rd Battalion, Trinidad and Tobago Cadet Force Band. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as I invite the Venerable, uh, sorry, Archdeacon, the Venerable Philip Isaac to give the invocation. Good morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, eternal of years and spheres, of all peoples, in all conditions, you are far beyond our capacity to understand. I call upon your divine power as the 18th Biennial Conference of Presiding Officers and Clerks of the Caribbean, the Americas, and Atlantic Region of Commonwealth Parliamentary Association 
convenes on this island to give insight and encouragement to the delegates as they wrestle with the complexity of global situations. As they collaborate on issues pertaining to enrichment of the fabric of parliamentary processes, may they have the patience to listen with wisdom and love, always holding on their vistas respect for one another and the dignity of human life. Protect them in their going out and coming in. That their stay here will be delightful, productive, and memorable. To your honor and glory. Amen. Thank you, Archdeacon Isaac. Please be seated. I now invite the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Bridget Anisette George, to give the welcome address. The Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Assemblyman Kelvin Charles and Mrs. Charles, the Vice President of the Senate of Trinidad and Tobago, Senator Nigel De Freitas and Mrs. De Freitas, Government Ministers and members of the Executive Committee of the Trinidad and Tobago Parliament, Presiding Officers of the Parliaments and the Legislative Assemblies of the Caribbean, Americas and Atlantic Region, of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. The presiding officer of the Tobago Assembly Legislature, Dr. Denise Soyafat Angus. Assemblymen and councillors of the Tobago Assembly Legislature, clerks of the parliaments and legislative assemblies of the Caribbean, Americas, and the Atlantic region. Representatives of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, guests, members of the Cadet Force, members of the media, the staff of the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago, and the Tobago Assembly Legislature, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Antigua and Barbuda, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Barbados, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Jamaica, Montserrat, Nevis Island, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Turks and Caicos Islands, Trinidad and Tobago. It is my distinct honor on behalf of the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago and on my own behalf to welcome you all to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and more particularly to what in a marriage one spouse may refer to the other as one's better half, the Paradise Island of Tobago. On the occasion of the 18th Biennial Conference of Presiding Officers and Clerks of the Caribbean, Americas, and Atlantic Region of the Commonwealth Parliament Association, CPE. I must confess my vaulting exuberance at this opening ceremony, as this conference affords the opportunity for those of us who stand in our various jurisdictions as the apex of democracy, as the actual symbol of the authority of the legislature, in our capacity as the presiding officer and as its chief operational officers of its administration, the clerk, to consider and collaborate on some of the issues which confront our legislatures and assemblies and through our exchanges to create solutions which redound to the benefit and advancement of democracy. Although it may not be ever present in the minds of our respective citizens, second to the process of free and fair elections, the rules and functions which we perform and the efficacy with which we are called upon to do so enhance the quality of our democracy. While it is true, when compared to the life of our respective legislatures and assemblies, many of us in our roles of presiding officers may be new 
as some parliaments or assemblies may not have as, may not have as yet been convened since its elections. And in other cases, we may be just about approaching the second year mark. I hasten to add that in any event, many of us are not first-time legislators. And therefore, from participation from one side or the other of the parliamentary well, we have made observations regarding the application of the parliamentary practice and procedure, particularly as relates to the exercise of the role and function of the presiding officer. Additionally, our clerks at the table bring a treasure trove of experience to our assistants. Admittedly, I have employed no scientific measure, but I'm prepared to take the liberty to state that collectively we have gathered here at least 100 years of experience in parliamentary practice and procedure in the region. My confidence may steer me to add to my qualification QED, but prudence dictates that I should place reliance instead on the abbreviation E plus OE. Our presence here speaks volumes. Our ability to reorganize our respective schedules and respond on short notice to the call to gather during our parliamentary recess is testimony to our commitment and dedication, not just only to our societies, but to our region and the CPA of which we are all members. For the benefit of others in our listening audience, permit me to di digress a tad to preempt the possibility of any misconception. Parliamentary recess for presiding officers, legislatures, and clerks bears no resemblance to recess at school. At no time does our business allow for play. In fact, the Honorable Speaker of the Parliament of Grenada and his clerk can in their presence here testify to that because today is the carnival celebrations in Grenada, but greater duty demands that they be here. The CPA comprises of 181 member parliaments and assemblies in nine regions across the globe. The Caribbean, Americas, and the Atlantic is one of those regions, and I am happy to report from the roll call in which I engaged at the commencement of my remarks that of the 19 branches which comprise our region, 15 are present at this conference. By way of providing context, we may recall that Section 1 of the Constitution of the CP sets out its reason that, which is, and I quote, to promote knowledge of the constitutional, social, and cultural aspects of parliamentary democracy, end quote. I think it is important for us to set the stage for the commencement of our deliberations by stating in some detail the underpinnings of CP activities such as this one in which we are about to engage over the next few days, so that not only its import to us individually is appreciated, but also its contribution to the Commonwealth and by extension the world. The underpinnings are as follows. One, Commonwealth parliamentarians, irrespective of gender, race, religion, or culture, share a community of interests based on respect for the positive ideas of parliamentary democracy, the rule of law, and individual rights and freedoms. Two, the governance of Commonwealth citizens will benefit by exposing political practitioners to the many different policies, procedures, and systems employed by other practitioners on a Commonwealth regional basis. Three, Although the Westminster style parliamentary system is dominant, all Commonwealth assemblies contribute to the continuing evolution of democratic methods of governance based on their own cultures, social traditions, and levels of development so that no single institution or country is seen as preeminent and no individual practice is universally applicable without local adaptation. And four, political, constitutional, and procedural consultations 
are most effectively conducted by facilitating contact between members and officials of parliaments and legislatures, and through full and frank discussions unfettered by intergovernmental decision making. We too, as members of the CPE, shall be guided by those principles during our conference. Our theme, parliamentary accountability and governance, comparing institutional designs. Prima facie demonstrates this. Under the rubric, which speaks of accountability and governance, it is manifested that we shall engage in the business of parliaments and assemblies, that is the legislative, oversight, budgetary, and representative functions. We shall discuss inter alia topics such as the committee system in small parliaments meeting the challenges, parliamentary leadership strengthening accountability, improving relations be between parliaments and society, strategic planning, a starting point for building effective parliaments, the adequacy of administrative support for the management of the legislative branch in small island states. The rubric, comparing institutional designs, bears credence to the lifeblood that it's, it is cultural diversity which is integral to and which should form all legitimate institutions and systems. It also commits us to the respectful regard which we should all demonstrate to our differences. So we compare institutional designs and not dictate a universal model. We all have something to inform the other and by corollary, we all have something to learn from the other. In addition to the learnings, on a personal note, the getting to know you is of parallel significance to me. Our conference is a springboard for reigniting established networks with the new personalities. In the brief interaction which I have had with most of you upon arrivals yesterday, this assures me of the camaraderie which already exists among strangers with shared interests committed to the same cause of promoting strong democratic institutions and legislatures. Yes, we have our standing orders, we have our learned clerks, and we have texts such as Erskine May's parliamentary practice and procedure. But sometimes we do need a willing, experienced, empathetic, trusting heir to which we can turn for not only advice, but at times solace. Someone who, so to speak, wears shoes similar to ours, even if not the same size. That is invaluable. The conference additionally seeks to engage our public in a topical environmental issue. On Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., the lecture series shall present Mr. Kishan Kumar Singh, a regional expert of international claim, who shall speak of the geopolitical responses to climate change. The public is invited, and I expect that in true, true Tobagonian style, citizens shall avail themselves of the opportunity to attend, to listen, and to show support to the work of our regional presiding officers and clerks at the table. At the risk of being interrupted by a presiding officer, duly guided by his or her clerk, on the point of order regarding time limits on speaking, I wish to crave your indulgence a little longer and invoke a request for an extension of my speaking time to treat with two final matters. Firstly, I extend apologies on behalf of the President of the Senate of Trinidad and Tobago, who has had to respond to the call to perform the higher duty as head of state and regrettably cannot join us, but who has asked me to convey her best wishes to each of you for a successful conference. Secondly, it shall be remiss of me if I fail to specifically recognize the contribution, eager interest, and generous participation of the presiding officer, the assemblymen and councillors of the Tobago Assembly Legislature, and the staff of the Tobago House of Assembly, the clerks of both houses, and the staff of the Trinidad and Tobago Parliament in doing all the proprietary work to ensure the success of our deliberations. In giving Jack his jacket and Jim his gym boots, 
and have taken some cultural latitude here. Let me admit that from here onwards, we can be assured of the best that hospitality has to offer Tobago style. And Madam Presiding Officer of the Assembly Legislature, outside of our formal program, I say we are entirely in your hands. Morgan Wharton, a high school basketball coaching legend, whose successes were featured in the film, The Godfather of Basketball, has been quoted as describing the work of a coach as follows, and I quote, that's the beauty of coaching. You get to touch lives. You get to make a difference. You get to do things for people who will never pay you back. And they say you have never had a perfect day until you've done something for someone who will never pay you back, end of quote. I am of the view that that statement is equally applicable to the work of and in the legislature. Every day is a perfect day for inherent in what we do fairly, diligently, effectively, and efficiently. We get to do something for our citizens for which we will never be paid back and for which we have no expectation of repayment. Honorable presiding officers and esteemed clerks at the table, with the greatest of respect, I say, Time is precious. So let's get to work. I thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. We will now be treated to a cultural performance by Tobago Theatre. Let's welcome them. Let we all have sword carry. Let we carry sword and sword away. Let we all have sword carry. Let we carry sword and sword away. Let we all have sword carry. Let we carry sword and sword away. Oh, Mr. Fila, oh, hi. Good, grand, gracious, and pleasant morning. To everybody, we bring warm greetings and ever vibes the energy. But me know no for all of us in wondering who we be dressed up in a pretty frack with soul in our hand, we conquer everybody. Don't fret yourself, just relax and go with the ebb and flow. But don't fret, draw for your seatbelt and take in. Are we speech band show? Drag your bow, Mr. Fiddler. Let we all have so carry. Let we carry so that so that away. Let we all have so carry. Let we carry so that so that away. Oh, Mr. Fiddler. Oh, hi. This is not 
no jokey masquerade, you know. This, our active education, Tobago's history at the laps of all who dare to listen. In this speech band business, uh, we are both warriors and linguistics. But if you're wondering, uh, we was graded at the top of the speech band class, graduated with a degree in moral democracy and a, and a bachelor's in national quotas. No. Drag your bow, Mr. Fiddler. to business of parliament, it's a enough, enough thing to consider. So let me give all of this lesson here in a standard dialect so Uno I will never, ever forget one. What good for one, most good for all. Because you see, that's the true meaning of democracy. Two, chakasna lazy for carry your load. It means work hard, consider good ethical practices. And the last lesson, the one most profound, whatever you do, attack it with full force. Drag your bow, Mr. Fiddler. Now we all have so carry. Now we carry so that so that away. Now we all have so carry. Now we carry so that so that away. Oh, Mr. Fiddler. Oh, ha, ha. If you know anything about Tobago, you know that this place is culturally rich. The ancestors bless you with flora and fauna and a heritage of traditions and we heal and stitch. If you're talking reef and rainforest, goat and crab ways, wake and bongo, then you hit the hammer on the nail because all of that is Tobago. You could identify a Tobago onion anywhere in the world you go because it's strength generosity and straightforwardness are what stories untold and the moral fabric of society is rooted in discipline and order two key features parliamentary procedure drag your bow mr fiddler hey, we all have so Sets the proclaimed sacred and watches over this land. But it's a long time as she don't pay attention to the educated miscreant who intentional, is intentionally intervene on the basis of personal reason. Because parliamentary business is not about self. It's about service to nation and extension. But what period does expire? When the boat could no longer stay afloat, and the leverage of a long rope does end up tied up, maga goat, drag your bow, Mr. Fiddler. There we go. Development are with us quick to defend, but all good things must come to an end. We hope that something we say resignate in all our uh, deep dung inside, but we're not able to overstay. We welcome, we soon gone here now. When the conference done, no play shy and break and mix and miss and make smoke. This is the grandest opportunity for all our to network, but. For a parliament to successfully operate, it depends on all are we, everyone, 
so we could build a better, stronger Caribbean region. Track your poor Mr. Fiddler. Where we all have so carry, where we carry so Thank you very much to Tobago Theatre, and we could not have a conference opening like this and not include some of our Tobago heritage. And I'm sure that our own Vice President of the Senate, Mr. Nigel De Freitas, who's from Tobago, would have been especially proud of that performance. Thank you very much again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to invite you to stand as we welcome the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, the Honorable Kelvin Charles, to give the feature address. Please be seated. The Honorable Bridget Anisette George, MP, Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. The Honorable Camille Robinson Regis, Minister of Planning, Vice President of the Senate, the Honorable Nigel DeFritas and Mrs. DeFritas, other parliamentarians and members of the Executive Committee of the Trinidad and Tobago Branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, visiting speakers and presidents of legislatures, Dr. Denise Oyafat Angus, presiding officer of the Tobago House of Assembly, fellow members of the Tobago House of Assembly, Mr. Ray Sandy, chief administrator, and other administrators of the Tobago House of Assembly, regional clerks of the houses, other distinguished delegates, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my pleasure as Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly to welcome all of you to the beautiful island of Tobago where we have the very distinct pleasure of hosting you for the next five days. Back in 2005, our sister island of Trinidad had the distinction of hosting the 13th installment of this conference. And by then, Trinidad had hosted the CPA conference on quite a few occasions. As some of you may recall, I served as presiding officer of the Tobago House of Assembly for a little over three years. And I must confess, that I was delighted as presiding officer of the Assembly Legislature in 2015 to offer Tobago as the venue for the 18th installment of this conference. Indeed, the people of Tobago felt honored when Tobago's offer was accepted at the conference in Bermuda later that year. It is therefore a distinct pleasure for me to stand here today as Chief Secretary speaking to you on this momentous occasion and to see among you many distinguished persons whom I still consider to be my esteemed parliamentary colleagues. The 18th Biannual Conference of Presiding Officers and Clerks of the Caribbean, Americas and Atlantic Region of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association comes at a time when we as parliamentarians face a public that is more discerning, more outspoken, and more informed. But at the same time, in some instances, 
misinformed than at any time in the history of the world. At a time where Facebook and Instagram are competing with mainstream media, it is especially important that the operations of our parliaments are and appear to be transparent. As such, the topic of parliamentary accountability bears significant relevance as the overarching theme that will guide the discussions of the 16th Commonwealth Caribbean Nations, my apologies, of the 15 Commonwealth Caribbean Nations represented at this gathering. The wide-ranging discussions to be held over the next five days will seek to address matters such as topical procedural issues, improving relations between parliament and society, parliamentary accountability, challenges faced by the committee system in small parliaments, support for legislatures in small island states, and parliamentary leadership. With these topics in mind, we ought never to think that any one of us in any way is immune to the issues that affect our brother and sister parliaments in other Commonwealth nations. There are many, many areas where we here in Trinidad and Tobago have work still to be done. And as such, being able to learn from our colleagues from neighboring Commonwealth jurisdictions would be of great help in refining or redesigning our parliamentary processes and functions. This conference comes as part of the mandate of the Caribbean Americas and Atlantic region of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association to host biannual conferences with the goal of engendering common values among member states of the CPA through coming together, discussing, and sharing information that comes out of our own unique experience in our individual nations and territories. For the remainder of this five-day period, and indeed, for the remainder of our public lives, I would like us to take guidance from an excerpt of an article written in the Harvard Business Review on January 11, 2016, which states, and I quote, Accountability is not simply taking the blame when something goes wrong. It is not a confession. Accountability is about delivering on a commitment. It's responsibility to an outcome, not just a set of tasks. It's taking initiative with thoughtful, strategic follow-through. Unquote. For accountability to be done effectively, we must ensure that those tasked with the function of scrutiny are provided with the resources that they need to perform their function effectively, and that those performing such functions are themselves held to the highest standards of accountability, and may I say as well, integrity. As such, the role of oversight committees in parliamentary scrutiny must never go unnoticed, particularly in the context of small island states such as ours. The limited size of our legislators too often means that our parliamentary committees face crippling limitations in terms of members as well as time available to serve. This results in committee members often being overwhelmed and places limitations on how in-depth each committee's investigations can go into each entity under its purview. In the face of mounting concerns about accountability, we must therefore seize all opportunities to question the effectiveness of all mechanisms for ensuring such accountability. What checks and balances are employed to ensure that potential wrongdoing by those engaged in public life does not happen, and that anyone who engages in such conduct is caught and brought to justice? What resources are allocated 
to entities whose mandate is to serve as watchdogs in the public sector. What follow through is there in instances where such entities must take action against a person or body found to be engaging in improper practices. Yet another aspect of accountability that must be addressed is perception. Parliament must have a high level of accountability and it must be so perceived by citizens. For this to be done, the public must be well informed on initiatives and actions taken by their parliaments to ensure that proper process is followed in all aspects of public life and procedure. This is where the media, both traditional and social, can play an integral role. Radio, television, and print remain mainstays in informing the population and shaping public opinion. But so too are social media platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Effective use of and partnerships with these types of media would undoubtedly help to maintain public trust in the legislature. While the accountability role played by Parliament is more important than ever, Parliament must consciously share that work with other agencies. We must continue to foster working relationships with ministries, divisions, the business sector, the media, and the man in the street. This will inevitably help the wider public to be better informed about what its parliament is doing with respect to the countless issues that affect citizens. As members of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, we must ever be reminded of why the CPA exists. That is, quote, to develop, promote, and support parliamentarians and their staff, as well as to identify benchmarks of good governance and to implement the enduring values of the Commonwealth, end of quote. Some of these Commonwealth values are democracy, human rights, the rule of law, good governance, recognition of the needs of small states, and the recognition of the needs of vulnerable states, among others. Let us never take lightly the responsibilities that lie before us as presiding officers, clerks, and representatives of our parliaments and our nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I really do not have the need to request additional time to complete my brief remarks. And perhaps I should say as well that the length of an address is not what necessarily defines a feature address. And therefore, in spite of the seriousness of the formalities that lie ahead at this conference, I do hope that each of you finds the time to enjoy the sights, the scenery, the food, and indeed our very distinct and unique culture that we have to offer here in Tobago. As a matter of fact, you would have witnessed a taste of it a short while ago. And I'm sure it would have set your hearts and minds racing and pounding and yearning for, I think it's Thursday, when you will be treated to a more elaborate menu of our cultural interactions as well as our cultural tapestry. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, let me also take this opportunity as well to welcome you to what we like to call the capital of paradise. And I see a good friend of mine, the clerk of Barbados, looking at me in, as I would like to say, a particular tone of voice. But he would appreciate that Barbados is one of us in the Caribbean. But of course, it cannot beat us in respect of beauty. 
So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you and I say to you, please enjoy your stay here over the next five days and at the end of which I look forward to some of the quality del deliberations that I'm sure you will have as we seek to ensure that we place our parliaments on a stronger footing given the fact that our democracy is always evolving. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charles, for those encouraging words. I now invite the presiding officer of the Tobago House of Assembly, Legislature, Dr. Denise Soyafat Angus, to bring the vote of thanks. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Bridget Anisette George, Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Mr. Kelvin Charles and Mrs. Charles, Vice President of the Senate of Trinidad and Tobago, Senator Nigel De Freitas and Mrs. De Freitas, Government Ministers and Members of the Executive Committee of Trinidad and Tobago Parliament, Presiding Officers of the Parliaments and the Legislative Assemblies of the Caribbean, Americas and Atlantic region of the Parliament, Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Assemblymen and councillors of the Tobago Assembly Legislature, clerks of the Parliament and Legislative Assembly of the Caribbean, Americas and the Atlantic region. Chief Administrator Ray Sanley and other administrators of the Tobago House of Assembly representatives of Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, distinguished guests, members of the media, the staff of the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago and the Le uh, Assembly Legislature, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning to all of you. My task, I'm sure you all would agree, is very easy after coming uh, coming after those eloquent speakers that we have had this morning and exciting cultural expressions. Nevertheless, I must follow protocol and still say thank you to all of them. Madam Speaker, I wish to say thanks for that welcome speech, the address that set the stage for this exciting conference here on the island. It was both deliberate and comprehensive in, in ensuring that we can follow through and deliver at the end of our activities. Ensuring that we can apply the parliamentary practice and procedures and lift the quality of our legislatures and our parliaments where we preside. Being part of a hundred years of experience amongst the region and perhaps in this room, as a new presiding officer, I certainly feel very privileged and honored to be a part of many of you and look forward to the learning experience and the exchange that we will have throughout this conference. To the Chief Secretary, I think we all have to say thank you for your foresight in offering Tobago as the venue for the conference this year and I want you to give him a round of applause for that. The ripple in the ocean starts with one drop, and that was the drop 
It's now for us to take it and run with it and ensure that the intention of having the conference in Tobago will deliver on the results that we all intended at the 17th biennial conference that was held. He in turn challenged us to continue lifting the standards of parliamentary practice throughout the region. And I know that as a past presiding officer, his commitment is intact with respect to implement implementation of such right here in Tobago at the Tobago House of Assembly. He indeed emphasized the need for accountability and transparency oversight by parliaments while using the latest technology to educate the wider public. And I must emphasize his points that we have to speak to a younger audience. They are the future. And it's not enough for us to continue speaking amongst ourselves and not being able to reach the young people to inform and educate them about where their future lies. And in addition, to hear from them what they consider their future to be. And therefore, we have to find ways, as the Chief Secretary would have encouraged, to ensure that we can engage them on the platforms where they normally reside. And so I want to say again, thank you to the Honorable Kelvin Charles for that very informative feature address this morning. And of course, our Trinidad and Tobago Cadet Force, the third battalion, you indeed delivered this morning. And of course, the way you were able to uh, give that uh, rendition of music that allowed for the flags to come in and be placed in a very uniform way. And I want to thank you for the collaboration uh, over this uh, past period and for your perfect execution. Thank you. The Venerable Philip Isaac, Archdeacon, always appropriate in your prayers. And what stood out for me was respect and dignity in all of our discussions. And I know that we will all take that with us and with those prayers, again, be able to deliver at this conference. Our cultural performers, the Tobago Indigenous Speech Band by the Theater Company, you almost got another feature address in culture. And I want to say thank you to them and on behalf of the presiding officers and the clerks to assure them that we will be attacking this conference with full force. And we will also be committed to networking, to getting to know each other better, because this is only through networking and the exchange of ideas that we can ensure that we will build a stronger Caribbean. And that is what is needed. To the delegates, presiding officers and clerks, I am truly excited that you took the time out to be here with us. You set aside whatever you had to do, including carnival in Grenada. And I assure you that we believe in hard work and much play because we believe in balance on this island. The capital, you can't be in the capital of paradise and not practice balance. So I say welcome again to all of you. And whilst we work hard during the day at the conferences, in the evenings and on Thursday, you will get to experience the other part of Tobago. And I truly hope that once you've left the island, that you will be teased enough to return at another time. Of course, this conference could not happen 
without the diligent the diligence and hard work of the staff of the Parliament and the Assembly Legislature. Night and day, day and night, trips across the waters, telephone calls, we were able to do it. And I want to say thanks to both the Parliament and the Assembly Legislature staff for the level of collaboration that we have had over time and their commitment. As you see, as you experience the whole uh, conference, I'm sure you will appreciate the amount of work that would have gone into making this conference a success. And I would like you to give them a special round of applause for that. To members of the media, I thank you for being here. And let me say that I, I, as a new presiding officer, I am truly excited that Tobago is the venue. I am truly excited that I can be part of this experience and learn from all of you. And so I say to us, as we close, let us go forth attack with full force, work hard, play hard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Soyafat Angus. I'd like to invite now the Chief Secretary to join the delegates on stage for the official photograph. Mrs. Joseph Guevara, she will direct the delegates to come forward. All the delegates, would you please come forward for the photograph? No, it'll have to unplug, so we need to leave it here. Yes. <laughs> Should some people stand in front, if you would like to? 
Demir. I may have to very tall person. Oh, tall person in the front? No, I'm short, so I'll stay right here. And we would like you to stand away from the microphone. 